it's 1,335,392 pesos and 12 centavos or about 24,000 US dollars. Okay, that is it. If you're only interested on how much is the financial cost of me matching into a US medical residency program because you're trying to estimate how much your possible journey will cost you as a Filipino medical graduate, that's it. That's a number you need to know. The spreadsheet is in the description below. The rest of the video is about random factoids I learned and wanted to share and highlight and maybe some non-financial costs of matching into a US medical residency program. So this is the current timeline we are living in right now. I started my prep on September 2020, registered for ECFMG the next month, took my step 1 exam on January 2021 before the pass fail, CK on August 2022 because of the pandemic, right? I was supposed to take it on August 2021, but the Prometric Center closed down that time. Then I burned out and didn't want to study for a couple of weeks. Weeks turns into months. It's okay though. Got my ECFMG certificate on time to apply for the 2022-23 cycle. Did not match. Tried SOAP. Didn't work. Applied for US tourist visa to hunt for US clinical experience. Got approved. Almost got married. Didn't. Went to the US. Got my USCE done. Actually got married. Applied for the 2023-24 cycle. Interviewed. Rank. Match. And we are gathered here today to discuss and celebrate the journey of this lucky bastard that even after failing to match the first time, did not give up, tried again, and eventually succeeded. How did he actually get good? Well, first of all, let's talk about my US clinical experience because that is a major CV improvement from compared to my previous year's application. It significantly increased my chances of getting invites and I got asked a lot about this during my interviews. And you know, it also improved me as a doctor. Uh, there's also that, you know, it's important, right? It should be important to us, right? Kidding aside, I'm truly grateful for my mentors for their time and the knowledge I have gained from them was invaluable. Also, I got my USCE basically for free. But what cost me financially during this time is the rent and other living expenses that you have to prepare for. Because it's not enough for us healthcare workers to just learn and improve, right? We also need to live, which is bothersome sometimes. Anyways, you have to travel to the US for your US clinical experience because it's in the name. And even if I have savings from my year's worth of income when I was practicing as a GP in the Philippines, living in the US is quite expensive. My stash is essentially gone by the third or maybe fourth month when I was staying here. You probably should expect more expense when you are getting your USCE in the future because inflation and whatever. So that's that. Application to ERAS, on the other hand, is the most expensive of this whole ordeal, especially for me because I have to pay for it twice. And to that point, I want to like refer you to one of Dr. Sheriff of Sojum's videos or series of videos. He has a YouTube page and he discusses, um, among other things, like why ERAS exists in the first place. And the second video I want to point out is like, why is there a possibility that ERAS might not exist in the future? I was researching about this topic in the past and I'm glad I don't have to like make a video about it because someone already made an excellent job explaining why we use ERAS and why is it so expensive. On the other parts of the spreadsheet, you might have noticed that I tried my best to avoid as much expenditure as I could. However, there are certain review materials that I was forced to like buy but for the rest of it, I sometimes borrow my ex-girlfriend's reviewers, sometimes I just bought some second-hand books from trusted groups. Although I was planning to, I did not take my step 3 exam because I don't know if my program would reimburse that expense if I have not signed their contract yet. So I'll just let my future self deal with it and not think about it right now. By the way, I have a phone app that I use to track all of these expenses. It's not necessary but it makes my life easier, not sponsored by the way. Another change from my previous year's application is that I won't be needing visa this year because I got married and applying for citizenship. So I applied for US medical training using my employment authorization document or EAD. Another FYI, as of writing and recording, I don't know where I match yet. NRMP would usually announce by Friday, so we will find out together. But to be honest, it doesn't really matter that much where I end up with because all the programs I interviewed with and rank, all of them are amazing programs and will not make me regret if ever I match with them. 
I don't know if it's me that my training from the Philippines have traumatized me to the point that I think all of the programs and all of the people I met are amazing and great. Because every time I finish an interview or a meet and greet with a program, I always leave thinking, hmm, I kind of want to rank that program number one because they're so great. So wherever I end up with, I will be okay. I could explain the rest of the spreadsheet, but I'm not going to because I think all of those other things are easy enough to understand and it's very intuitive in my opinion. And none of those are unexpected expenses. You really have to dish out money for it. And if ever you have any questions, you can always hit me up in the comment section below. I read all of your comments. What I did not expect though is how much the non-financial cost of matching into U.S. medical residency would affect me. Yeah, medical school is hard, being born in a developing country is hard, life is hard in general. But we are still here and we are still alive, right? We can get through the hardships of long hours of studying and working and not taking on holidays or weekends. Neglecting our physical and mental health is common in our profession. I'm not saying I agree with it, which I don't, to be clear. All I'm saying is it is the norm to suffer when we are still in training. Being in our most uncomfortable state gives us the most opportunity for growth. And at the end of the day, we have to realize why we are in this profession in the first place. The purpose of U.S. medical residency training is not to lift us out of our poverty. It's not to pay for our debts from thousands of dollars of cost of matching into the program. It's not to give us a citizenship and help us migrate from a developing country to somewhere better. Whatever benefits we get are just side effects and incentives we will enjoy for sure. But the real purpose of medical training in the U.S. and in general is to learn how to be competent doctors for our patients. That is the level of work ethic we are trained on as physicians when we finish medical school in the Philippines and hopefully any other medical school in the world. I understood early on what it takes for me to answer this calling in our profession and I accepted it a long time ago. However, that mindset did not prepare me enough for the fact that I would miss out on major life events of the people I truly value in my life. When I was a little bit younger, maybe back in college, and my friends and I had always had trouble in scheduling for meetups and get-togethers, we often jokingly say that our friend group can only be completed during major life events like weddings and funerals. Well, for the years of 2023 and 24, I was not able to attend some of my closest friend's weddings, which sucks. I was not able to invite them on my wedding, which also sucks. What is more terrible though was that when I was not available for my family when they needed me the most. Back in November 2023, one of my mothers died. She's my biological aunt, but I consider her as one of my moms because she's very involved in taking care of me when I was very young. Now that I'm older and after reading a couple of pages of Nelson Speeds and Kaplan and Sadox, I realized that uh, the kind of upbringing I had is not necessarily the ideal upbringing you want for your children. Let's just say I had a little bit of trouble when I was a kid, but my aunt has always been there for me, and I was not there for her or the rest of my family when she passed. I'm not saying your mom would die if you apply for a residency program in the U.S. I'm not saying a lot of things. What I'm saying is, if you choose to go through this path, there is a small chance that someone important to you might need you someday, and you will not be there for them. Oof, that got dark. Anyway, that is the video. I hope you learned something from it, and wherever you are, I hope you are doing well. Or at least feeling okay with what you are currently doing right now. This video is made for the viewers that ask me how much did it cost me. Well, here it is. It serves as a partial fulfillment of the one video per year quota I imposed to myself in this channel. And I don't know if I will be making more this year. Because I'm busy, you know? Messaging people with the news and clocking in hundreds of hours in Civ 6 and StarCraft and RimWorld or Dota. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.